Hey guys, welcome back to Cyber Platter. Today we'll discuss about software composition analysis, that is SCA. SCA is a security practice in software development and application security. This focuses on identifying and managing third party and open source software components and dependencies that is used in a software project. SCA is crucial for assessing the security and compliance of these dependencies and ensuring that they do not introduce vulnerabilities or any kind of risks into an application. Before talking more about software uh, composition analysis, let's try to understand the importance of software security and the presence of third party dependencies in modern software development. Importance of software security. First is protecting sensitive data. Software often deals with sensitive user data, financial information, personal details, and more. Security breaches can result in the theft of this data, leading to identity theft, financial loss, or privacy violations. Next is safeguarding reputation. Security breaches can severely damage a company's reputation and destroy customer trust. Users are less likely to engage with or trust software and services that have a a history of security incidents. Next is legal and regulatory compliance. Many industries are subject to strict data protection and privacy regulations like GDPR, uh, HIPAA. Non-compliance can lead to legal consequences and hefty uh, fines. Next is financial impact. Security breaches can result in direct financial losses through fraud as well as indirect costs related to incident response, legal fees and damage control. Next one is availability and reliability. Software incidents can disrupt the availability and reliability of software systems, causing downtime and productivity losses. Next is vulnerability exploitation. As technology advances, so do the capabilities of cyber criminals. Vulnerabilities in software can be exploited for various purposes purposes, including financial gain, activism, um, intellectual property, etc. Next, we'll see the reason for widespread presence of third party uh, dependencies. First reason is accelerating development. Third party libraries, frameworks and components allow developers to leverage pre-built solutions, saving time and effort in software development. Next is reusable code. Third party dependencies provide access to reusable code that is maintained and updated by experts. This reduces the need to reinvent the wheel and promotes code efficiency. Next is focus on core functionality. So usually what developers do, they use these third party dependencies for non core functionalities like authentication and encryption so that the developers can focus more on building features that differentiate their software. Next is ecosystem growth. Open source libraries and projects contribute to the growth of the software development ecosystem, fostering invest innovation and collaboration. Now let's see why is it important to address the risks associated with using third party libraries. First is complexity and risk. The more third party dependencies a project has, the more complex it becomes to manage and secure. Each dependency introduces potential vulnerabilities and compatibility issues. Also, upgrading third party libraries to fix vulnerabilities can sometimes sometimes introduce compatibility issues with the existing code base leading to additional development efforts. Next is false sense of security. Relying on third party libraries can create a false sense of security. Developers may assume that because a library is widely used, it's automatically secure leading to insufficient security scrutiny. 
Next risk is lack of visibility. In some cases, developers may not be aware of all the third-party libraries used in their project, making it challenging to assess and address vulnerabilities comprehensively. Also, it increases the attack surface. That is, the more third-party dependencies a software project has, the larger the potential attack surface becomes. Each dependency represents a potential vulnerability that attackers can target. Next is delayed or incomplete remediation. Even when vulnerabilities are known, there, there may be delays in remediation. Developers might postpone updates due to concerns about compatibility or they may not prioritize security updates properly. Next is supply chain attacks. Vulnerable third-party libraries can be a target for supply chain attacks. Attackers may compromise the library source code or or distribution channels impacting all software projects that depend on it. So because of all these risks, it is essential for software development teams to implement robust software composition analysis practices. SCA tools can help identify vulnerabilities in third-party libraries, prioritize them based on severity, and provide guidance on remediation. Regularly monitoring and updating dependencies is crucial to maintaining the security and reliability of software projects. Now that we know why we require software composition analysis tools, let's see the process of SEM. The process of software composition analysis, SEA, involves several steps to identify, assess, and manage the third-party dependencies and open source software components used in a software project. Let's see the detailed description of the SEA process. First is dependency identification. So the SCA process begins with the identification of all third-party dependencies in the software project. This includes libraries, frameworks, modules, and packages used in the code base. Next is dependency collection. Next, SCA tools gather information about these dependencies, including their names, versions, and sources. They create an inventory of all components, both direct and transitive. Next step is vulnerability scanning. So the SEA tools cross-reference the collected dependency information with known security vulnerabilities from various sources and proprietary vulnerability databases. So you can use known vulnerabilities databases like NVD, which stands for National Vulnerability Database. The tools identify whether any of the components have known vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities may include security flaws, bugs, or weaknesses that could be exposed. Exploited. Next step is security assessment. Next step is severity assessment. For each identified vulnerability, SEA, SEA tools assign a severity rating based on the impact and exploitability of the issue. Vulnerabilities are typically categorized as critical, high, medium, or low severity. Next step is Version analysis. SEA tools analyze the versions of the third party components being used in the software project. They determine whether there are uh, newer, more secure versions available. Developers can use this information to decide whether to upgrade their dependencies to the latest secure versions. Okay, the next step is risk prioritization. SEA tools prioritize identified vulnerabilities based on their severity and potential impact on the software. Critical vulnerabilities are often given the highest priority followed by high severity ones. Next is license compliance checks. In addition to security concerns, SEA tools also check for compliance with licensing and legal requirements associated with the use of open source software components. They identify license violations or conflicts. Next is policy enforcement. Organizations can define policies related to the use of third-party dependencies. These policies may specify acceptable versions, 
licensing requirements or security standards that must be adhered to. SCA tools can enforce these policies and report any violations. Next is alerts and reporting. SCA tools can generate alerts and reports that provide developers and security teams with detailed information about the status of their software's third-party dependencies. This includes lists of vulnerabilities, their severity ratings, and compliance issues. Next is remediation guidance. SEA tools often offer guidance on how to remediate identified vulnerabilities and compliance issues. This guidance may include steps to upgrade to a secure version, apply patches, or use alternative components. Next one is integration. SEA tools can be integrated into the SDLC, that is Secure Software Development Lifecycle, including CI-CD pipelines to automate scanning and reporting. This ensures that new vulnerabilities are detected as early as possible. Next is continuous monitoring. SEA is an ongoing process as new vulnerabilities are discovered over time. Continuous monitoring and periodic scans are essential to keep software dependencies secure and compliant. So in summary, SCA process involves identification, assessment, prioritization, and management of third-party dependencies and open source components to mitigate security risks, ensure compliance, and maintain software quality. It plays a crucial role in securing modern software applications. Now let's see some of the popular SEA tools and platforms. Um, there is Sync, White Source, Black Duck by Synopsys, now called as Detect. Nexus IQ by Sonatype, OWAS Dependency Check, Black Duck Hub, formerly called Hub Detect. Then there is Veracode, Dependency Track, Sonar Cube, and Node Security Platform, NSP. So that's it for today, guys. Hope this helped you understand what is software composition analysis and why it is important. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our videos. I will see you in another video with another topic. Until then, bye-bye.